Hey there, let's add an image using two different methods to our text adventure. I'm using Twine 2 and the Harlow story format. And we're going to use an HTML tag called the image tag. And all the image tag needs to know is one piece of information. And that's where the image that you would like to use is located. And that's actually where things get a little complicated. Hi, I'm Aaron, and this is the Text Adventure Co. And in this quick tip video, I'll show you how to add an image that's located either online or on your hard drives. And there's a major issue with each of these methods, and I'll go over what those issues are. So first up, to add an online image to your Twine passage, first thing you need to do is open up that passage and then just type in the HTML tag for the image, which is the angled bracket, and then IMG, which stands for image, then a space, and then SRC, which stands for source, and then the equal sign. Right after that equal sign is where all the magic happens. The source parameter, the SRC parameter here, it just wants to know where this image is stored. All right, so let's get an image that we have the rights to use or that we've licensed or that we feel really good about using. We'll go to Google search, get an image there. Then when you find the image, you're going to right click on it. And this is very important. You want to choose copy image address. You don't want to copy the image. You don't want to copy anything else. You just want to copy the image address. What this does is it takes the location online where this image is living and it puts it on your clipboard so we can paste it somewhere else. This text copy image address may differ when you right click your browser or your computer might phrase this slightly differently, but you're looking for the option that copies the image URL, copies the image address or copies the image location, something like that. Just not the one that says copy image. So before I paste a URL into Twine in that source field, I like to open up a fresh browser tab and just paste that URL that I just copied and was sent to my clipboard. And I paste that image URL in there. And the reason I do this is to make sure the image does come up and that there's no weird scripts running on the server that the image is stored on that are preventing direct access to the image or something like that. I just do a quick visual inspection to make sure I see a .jpg or a .png or maybe a .gif somewhere in that file name towards the end and I can go ahead and put that in twine. Worth noting that this image tag and then that SRC equals normally the image location, the URL or the file path on your computer is enclosed in double quotes. So it would be SRC equals double quote, then that URL to the image, and then another double quote at the end of it. You can also do this in single quotes, and you can also omit the quotes altogether, which may help things out if you are storing this image URL in a twine variable. The last thing we need to do is put the closing angled bracket on there, and we do that just immediately after that file extension. The major issues with this particular method is, one, finding an image that you have licensed or have permission to use. Two, you can't control the file size, and I'm not talking about the width and the height, which you can control in the style sheet. I'm talking about the actual size of the file, which could affect how long it takes to download when your player is playing your particular game. And three, and this is the big one, you have no control over how long that image stays online or whether or not the server is up or down or whatever, so your game is dependent on somebody else's web server and somebody else maintaining that image. So let's talk about how to alleviate some of those problems by using an image that's stored on our local hard drive. So I'm just going to go ahead and take an image here that I generated from MidJourney, and I'm going to save it to where my Twine story is. So this could be different on your computer, but it's usually in the documents inside of a folder called Twine, inside of a folder called Stories. That's usually normally where the HTML for your stories is stored. Find it on your computer, and you have a couple of decisions here. You can go ahead and just put your images right next to your HTML files in this particular folder on your computer. There's no problem with doing that at all, other than the fact that if you're working on multiple projects and you have lots of other asset types like fonts and music, then your folder will get a little bit messy. But if you're okay with it being a little messy, then storing your images in the same exact directory or folder on your computer where the HTML file is is perfectly reasonable, and it's what I'm going to do for this example. So that's just great. We have our image in that folder. And you'd think because it's in the same folder as the Twine HTML file that in that image tag inside of our Twine passage where it says IMG space SRC equals, you'd think right there we could just put in the file name, but we can't. If we put just the file name in there, you will see it will not work. We'll get a broken image tag. So let's go ahead and figure out why that's not working. I'll right click on the broken image icon, choose copy image location, just like we did when we got the online image, paste that up into an address bar and you can see it's looking for this image not where I pasted it or not where I put that image on my hard drive. It's not looking in the documents folder, the twine folder. It's looking in private var folders, GN, some sort of hashed value there, uh, and then T and then something there. It might be different on your computer, but that's not where the image is. 
So to fix this, we need to give Twine the complete system file path to this particular image, including the image name. So in Windows, you can hold down the Shift key, right-click on the image, and choose Copy as Path. On a Mac, it's a lot more fun because it's a real pain to get the file path. Luckily, you only need to do this once. Once you have the file path to your Twine installation, you just need it once. You can use it for all your different projects then. Now on a Mac, here's the trick. You just select the image, just left-click to select your image, then right-click on it and choose Copy, or you can use Command-C. Then open the terminal application on your Mac. If you don't know where that is, you can just use the Spotlight Search Magnifying Glass and then type in the word Terminal. We're going to go ahead and hit Command-V to paste what's on our clipboard into the terminal. And instead of pasting the image name or the image, it actually pastes the full file path to that image. Go ahead and hit Enter in Terminal. You'll get an error about permissions or something like that. That's okay. That's okay. The only reason we hit Enter is to make it easier to copy that file path. Now, there's a lot of text right there. You're only looking to copy the forward slash and then up to the end of the file name, which is the G in JPG or the G in PNG. You don't need any of that text on the right there. You're just looking for the file path, which for me looks something like slash users, slash my name, slash documents, slash twine, slash stories, and then the image name ending with the file extension, which should be JPG or PNG. PNG or GIF. Now with that full path pasted as the source for that image tag inside of the twine passage, you'll see the image comes up no problem. So here's the big gotcha with this method, and that is when you publish this and put this up on itch.io or some other game platform, it still has the local file path to your computer, which is no longer valid because the HTML file is no longer on your computer. It's at itch.io or on somebody else's computer. So when we publish, we need to get rid of the full file path and only include the folders that are inside of where your Twine HTML file is. This is why earlier I said it's much easier if you just put the image right next to the HTML file, because then there are no other folder bits. You don't have to put a slash images slash then image name. So if the image is in the folder right next to your HTML file, you can get rid of the entire file path and just have the image name there. So I'll do that now, and then I'll hit publish to file, and I'll publish that to some other directory on my computer. And we're hoping that this doesn't work. This shouldn't work because the image is not actually in this folder that I just published to, only the HTML file is. And if I bring up this story, then you'll see the image doesn't come up because the image doesn't live in this folder that I published to. It is back over in my documents folder. It's an easy enough fix, though. You just go over to your Twine Documents folder, copy that image, and put it into the directory where you published. And you would be safe then to select your HTML file and all of the images that you have saved along next to it and zip them up and upload them to itch. So the last gotcha, and it's kind of a big one for this method, is that if you have lots of different image calls in lots of different passages, it's a pain to then go have to remove this full file system path from all of them. Like that would take a lot of work and you would probably miss some and get frustrated. I store the full file path, that slash user, slash my name, slash documents, slash whatever, up into the Twine folder. I store that file path in a variable and I keep that variable outside of the passages in its own blank passage. So that variable is just in one passage all on its own, and then I use the print command to put that variable next to the image names. That way, when I'm ready to publish, all I do to that variable is set it equal to nothing or blank or, or not even a space, just empty, and that removes the file path automatically. So if you'd like me to do a full video on how to set up that variable scheme, let me know. I'd be happy to do that. In the meantime, I hope your games are going well. Thanks for watching the Text Adventure Co. channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you're into interactive fiction or making stuff in Twine, whatever it is you're into. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.